Welcome back, everybody. We're going to be carrying on our theme about trust and identity. My name is Emma Lindley. I'm co-founder of Women in Identity. And I've got an amazing speaker on with me next. Tamar Alam has spent 19 years at IBM studying and working with trust and identity systems. So she's going to be talking this afternoon for 45 minutes about trust and identity in multi-clouds. If we think about data breaches, last week we just heard that the entire population of Ecuador have had their data breach. Well, this is the type of thing that Tamara is going to talk to you about this afternoon. She's going to talk to you about how IBM and the work that she's doing helps secure data and trust and identity in the cloud. Okay. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. So I'm Tamar Elam. I'm an IBM fellow working in the IBM Research Center in New York. And I'm going to be talking with you about agility and trust and how they can come together in a hybrid cloud context. Agility is about delivering innovation with speed and with insight. It's about conducting experimentations with speed, rapidly, with reduced risk, while gaining valuable insight. Agility and cloud sort of work together Agility is a main driver for enterprises to move to the cloud, and cloud enables agility. Let's see how. So first off, the as-a-service model enables to deliver new capabilities to existing services on a daily basis. Abundance of APIs and abundance of data enables not only rapid innovation, but also a different quality of innovation. Not incremental, but disruptive. In order for enterprises to survive and even thrive in such an environment, they must transform themselves to be agile. And they can do that by adopting a cloud-native development style and a hybrid cloud delivery model. We're now entering chapter two in cloud. In chapter one, chapter one was all about experimenting with new applications in public cloud only. Chapter two, we are transitioning to production mission critical applications running on a multi and hybrid cloud. Obviously, in order to do that, we must worry about governance, security, privacy, and compliance. This is a little bit of what can happen if enterprises are too much in a rush of moving and adopting cloud-native development styles and cloud delivery model without worrying about putting the right controls in place. And there can be, as you know, very dire consequences um, uh, both to revenue and to reputation. Let that sink.
The problem is we're in a sort of a conundrum. On one hand, the line of business developer really cares about ease of use, agility, and experimentation. It's all about speed. On the other hand, the CIO, he cares about, or she, about security, compliance, governance, and in general, stability. These two don't really go well together. So in order to satisfy both, we must reinvent the way we address security and compliance in the cloud. Let's see how we can do that. Our approach includes three different pillars. The first pillar is about end-to-end -end compliance. We start by analyzing compliance documents using techniques such as natural language processing in order to extract obligations. We then map these obligations to control points in the cloud that are used for collection of data and enforcement. Now, this end-to-end -end mapping allows us to respond to any audit request instantaneously with the right evidence. In the second layer, we transform the way we deliver software in the cloud by unifying security and DevOps. And in the third layer, we introduce optimized controls in our cloud platform for integrity, for isolation, and for secure connectivity. All right, so let's talk about how we unify security and DevOps. The only thing you need to know about DevOps is that it's based on two main principles. The first principle is everything as code. Not only what developers are producing as part of their day job, but also scripts and configuration files, which is what the ops people are using. Everything is code. The second principle is that of a unified process to deliver change in the cloud. Not only code changes, but any change. Any change to system and configuration. And that unified process is called continuous delivery. The way it works is that all bill of material, code, scripts, configuration files, are stored in a repository, such as Git. And then there is a build process and deployment process that works off that. Now, everything is code and a unified process is actually a great opportunity for us. Because everything is stored in Git as code, which is basically data, we can run analytics on that data. And we can use this analytics in order to detect vulnerabilities before the code is even deployed. Because we have a unified process, we can block deployment of anything that did not pass our analytics. So that gives us a way 
to protect our system. Let's reiterate why this is important. More than 140,000 vulnerabilities are found in software every year. We simply do not have enough experts to address security problems that are emerging. All right, so when the code is deployed in the cloud, it's already too late. So this is what we have developed. We have developed a threat impact modeler that works by analyzing data stored in the Git repository, code, your own source code, the libraries that you're using, the configuration files which are used for deployment, the scripts, the OS files, and the, uh, con uh, um, the OS files, and any other configuration files that you have there, including open source projects. We're analyzing configuration and deployment. We're detecting vulnerabilities in software. And we're checking for compliance. At the end, we're producing a report. Not a report, actually. It's a remediation script that is automatable. And then if you execute it, you are guaranteed to pass all the tasks, be free of vulnerabilities, satisfy compliance policy, and you can go ahead and deploy your system. From the point of view of the developer um, and the user of our system, the experience is simple. However, under the hood, we're generating a very large graph that includes all of the dependencies and relationships between your artifacts, the code, the libraries, the open source projects, and the OS files and configuration. We traverse that graph and we analyze each node on that graph in order to detect violations and vulnerabilities. Well, as I said, taking care of the code is not the only thing that we need in order to secure our systems. We also need to build into the cloud platform control points so that we guarantee integrity and that we guarantee isolation between the containers. We need to build these optimized control points in each layer of the cloud stack. So this is some of the things that we do. First, we encrypt all container images in order to make sure that even if they are kept in third-party repositories, they are still safe. They still remain private. Second, we ensure that the image is decrypted only on a trusted cloud platform, taking into account compliance and policy restrictions. So the image is decrypted only on authorized cloud platforms. Separate layers of encryption are used in order to ensure that we can have collaboration of multiple different users that are creating multiple different layers of the resulting image. We're working with the open community and specifically with the open container initiative 
in order to implement this solution. In addition, you also want to make sure that software that is not signed is not going to run. So signing of software is another project that we're working on. Uh, it's an open source, source project, which is called Porteries. Now, let's say that you um, passed all of the checks, that your image was decrypted on a trusted cloud platform, and that all signatures were verified. So now you have the software running in the cloud. What we need to do now is make sure that there are no mutations or no malicious mutations to the software while it's running. So this is why we implemented Mutation Advisor. Mutation Advisor detect runtime drifts from the desired state and it analyzes and alerts if these mutations look like they are malicious. All right, so we talked about encryption, we talked about signatures, and about mutations at runtime. This is all about the content of a single container and protecting that content. But what about if your container is attacked from outside? Let's say from another container that is running on the same host, leveraging vulnerabilities in the kernel. So this is why my colleague James Bottomley invented a new type of container that is much more secure and it's called Nabla containers. The way it works is basically it's reducing significantly the attack surface. In this case, the attack surface is the interface between the container runtime and the host kernel. Normally, there are 300 system calls more than 300 between the container and the host system. Every such system call on that interface introduces vulnerability. But in Nabla, we reduce these 300 system calls to only seven system calls. That's why Nabla is a much more secure container. There is a lot of buzz around Nabla. There are performance tests that are documented. So if you're interested in Nabla, it's very easy to learn more. Last, I'd like to talk with you about the communication across the containers. My team in IBM Research pioneered a service, a microservice mesh together with Google, which is called Istio. Istio has a rich set of capabilities. It's used to integrate microservices, to manage the life cycle of each microservice, and the communication across microservices. It has capabilities such as telemetric collection and smart routing. It also has rich capabilities for security. For security, we're encrypting all traffic across containers. We also provide mutual TLS authentication between any two microservices. In addition, we have policy 
such as RBAC policy and rate limiting policy. And we also have circuit breakers which are used in order to protect your resiliency. So this is Istio. Okay, so I feel that we have covered a lot of ground today, so let me put everything together for you. We offer a systematic approach to automate security and compliance in the cloud without compromising agility. We protect every layer of the cloud stack to provide integrity and isolation. We also address security and compliance across the life cycle of applications, development, deployment, and runtime. Pre-deployment, we do the vulnerability analysis, and we do encryption of the image content. At deployment, we verify signatures and we in, in, incorporate policy in understanding where an image can be decrypted only on trusted platforms. At runtime, we're doing the mutation analysis to detect mutations that are malicious. We provide, we offer containers that are much more secure, Nabla, and we secure the communication between microservices using Istio. If you like to learn more, you're invited to join us in the main IBM booth, G120, and in the IBM research booth, which is right over there, um, number 35 in the discovery zone. I'm going to be around to answer questions. I'm going to be there for a little while and in the reception tonight. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tamar. So that's it just for now. For the next um, one hour and 15 minutes, we are going to be back here on this stage at 3.15, talking about what is the real meaning of identity with Kalia Young. She's going to do a deep dive into self-sovereign identity. Some of you may have heard of it. Some of you may not. But come back here at 3.15 to hear about that. Thank you.